Good morning. It's great to be here with you again um, and to be able to continue to praise God together as God's people, to think about the Holy Scriptures and the passage we've just learned, and also to be together as the people of God in one place to give God the glory. Today's theme, of course, is praise. We're going to praise God with music. We're going to praise God in song, praise God in our minds and hearts and our bodies. And um, I will not be giving you a very long sermon, though, because uh, this is like the message part one in the sermon. And I don't know if you notice in your bulletin, there's a message part two that is coming. So if you're new here and if this is your first time, we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are glad you are here. And I want you to know that we don't always have a musical as part of our worship service. You know, just to be sure that you know that that although this is wonderful and fun and glorious and good, it's not something that we do um, every time. And Jennifer is saying thank God for that. So we've just completed, though, a series, too, in our church, as you know, about the Bible and what the Bible is. So I thought I would talk a little bit about that today, too, because we haven't talked at all so far about poetry in the Bible, or especially the book of Psalms. So today's reading from the Scriptures comes from the last, the last part of the book of Psalms. And in fact, the Jewish name for the book of Psalms is Praises. Now, that's an interesting idea, because in fact... What the, uh, the psalm seems to be doing in the Bible is, is having heard the laws of God and knowing the stories of God, having heard about the ancient prophets and leaders of Israel, Israel itself gathers together and speaks a word back to God of prayer. The book of Psalms is a book of prayers in poetry. And uh, an interesting thing about the book is, is the specific names of the people and particular events and problems have almost all been taken out. So that the Psalms have been able to speak again and again and again, generation upon generation to the people of God. And one of the things that happens when we take God seriously in our life is we begin to bring God into the problems and the struggles and the difficulties of our life. And if you actually read the book of Psalms, which I think is a beautiful book and has been read by the church since the very beginning, Jesus quotes the book of Psalms, all the apostles, all the letters quote from the book of Psalms, it's one of the most beautiful and widely quoted books of the whole Bible. And although it is called praises in in the Hebrew Bible, Tehillim, as a matter of fact, One-third of all those poems and prayers talk about problems, struggles, enemies, difficulties. When Jesus is actually on the cross himself, he quotes, in, in his language, from the beginning of Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A poem of lament. And yet, in the larger context of what Israel wants to say about God, it's all praise. It's all praise. The book of Psalms is divided into five parts, just like the five books of Moses. And the last five Psalms all end with the same word, the word hallelujah. Hallelujah has been such an influential word in Israel and the church that it's been translated and it actually occurs as a word in almost every language on earth. Hallelujah. Give praise to God, the God who creates us, the God who saves us, the God who is with us now, and the God who's come to us in Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and to renew our very bodies so that even in the midst of death, we have the promise of eternal life. To praise God and to sing to God, then, is not some kind of strange little weird thing we do off to the side on Sundays so that in the rest of the week we can struggle with our problems. Rather, what the book of Psalms is saying is even in the midst of our struggles, even in the midst of our problems, we are called to give thanks to God and to lay our problems before God. God wants to be part of our life. 
And in this world, part of our life just is going to be the struggles that we're going through. It's very easy to think that God is too busy, maybe, to be concerned about the little things that I'm going through in my life. But that is just not true. That is not the God of the Bible. That is not the God of the Christian faith. That is not the God and Father of Jesus Christ. That God wants to know about our problems. And at the end, the great saints and the, the authors of Scripture say that even though they had difficulties in life, God was still good. God was with them. God upholded them. And they are going to praise God. They're going to praise God with all they are every day. Not just on one day of the week, but every day they're going to praise God with all they are. And that's why I think this final psalm, this final compelling command to give praise to God moves beyond Israel. It moves beyond church people. And it talks about the whole of creation is one great hallelujah. And so music and song is, is more than just thinking about words in your mind, right? Have you ever wondered about, why is it when the church gets together, why do we sing? Because when you sing, right, I mean, Jerry, help me out here, but when you sing, it's like your whole body, right? You breathe into the center of your body, the sound comes up from your chest through your, out into your mouth, your head resonates with the sounds that you're making, right? And not only that, but, okay, I'll give you a little secret. The Psalms also talk about dancing. <laughs> to actually move your body in church, you know, and to dance around in praise to God. You are saying, not just my, I don't just worship God with my mind, quietly, in my little inner head. I worship God with my whole body, my whole self. Is worshiping God. And that is why music and song has always long been a part of the human praise of the Creator God. And this psalm is no different. Well, I promised you a short psalm today. So today we are going to have a musical that also continues to teach us what it means to praise God in every area of life. But if you remember nothing else, from what you've worshipped about God today, remember this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen.